Good morning. We are here on Cape Cod and we are getting ready to service and winterize and shrink wrap this Boston Whaler with a two stroke Yamaha 70 horsepower engine. A uh, customer stated yesterday that his power trim tilt was not doing anything. So that is the first thing I'm gonna take a look at. I'm gonna pop the hood and I'm gonna see if we have voltage going to the motor for the trim tilt pump. So let's see how this goes. So what we have right here that I'm looking at is the trim tilt motor relay. Um, the, the wires that go to the motor for the trim tilt are always blue and green. And when you hit the trim switch, which we have right here, you either get negative 12 volts, or if you go the other direction, you'll get positive 12 volts. Now I know it's not exactly 12 volts, but the trim motor should still be making noise uh, and, and hopefully going up or down slowly. So looking at this now, I suspect that the motor is bad and will need to be replaced. So the wires come from the, uh, the solenoid and come down here. This is the motor for the trim tilt hydraulic unit here. Um, pretty rusty, looks a little old aged. And so I was hitting it with a hammer and now the motor needs to be replaced. <laughs> but I will keep the hammer handy while I do the service on this outboard. I'm gonna start with a little stabilizer in the fuel tank. This fuel tank is practically empty, so I'm just gonna give it a little slurp of stabilizer. Only follow the recommended dosage. Do not overdose. It causes more problems than, uh, than does good. All right, I'm getting ready to drain and change the lower unit gear loop. This is a great time to remember to pull any hull drain plug if you're gonna be winterizing the boat for yourself or a customer. So we pulled the drain plug for the hull. This is the oil level plug. When you go to fill, you're gonna fill to that level. I use an impact screwdriver here. down here definitely keeping an eye for any water which would usually come out first or would make the oily have a uh, uh, the oil have a very milky coffee look to it and uh, also have a look, a lot of the drain plugs have a magnet. Just have a look to see how much metal is stuck to the magnet. We'll give you an indication as to the, the health of the lower unit. Right, we're gonna let that drain. While that is draining, I am going to grease the grease fittings. There's one here for the steering. and it's squeezing out up here. So that's all set. There's usually one here. And there's one here. And that comes out right around where it tilts. While I'm at it, I am going to grease up the trailer wheel bearings.
No. Might as well throw a little grease at the trailer jack. Okay, uh, we're gonna let that drain and come back to it. This spring, the steering was completely locked up. It took me a long time to work it free. And the problem is actually in the column here, part of the engine, it was not the cable itself. So just as an extra step, I'm going to just coat this with WD-40. And fluid film. Just to coat it for the winter. Hopefully it will not get jammed up again. And uh, hopefully we find it's moving freely next spring. Be sure to check the gaskets for the drain plug and the level plug. If they are not in perfect condition, you really should replace them. These gaskets here look to be in really relatively perfect condition. And next we want to tilt the outboard as far down as we can. I've got it as far down as we can. And with any luck at all, I'll be able to thread in my hose with my gear lube. I typically use, uh, mercury or quicksilver high performance 90 gear lube it fits most every application perfectly uh, some exceptions are high horsepower over 300 horsepower yamaha they definitely want to use a different type of gear lube other than that this uh, sae high performance 90 fits the bill nicely i like this oil use whatever you like use oem but I've always had good results with this. So now I'm just going to fill up this lower unit gear case until the oil starts to come out the oil level hole. All right, we've filled the gear case. It is a solid stream coming out the oil fill level hole. And we're going to put the top plug back in. Excellent. Now you don't have to kill this, but I do like to give it a, a, a good stiff whack or a couple of light ones with the impact driver. Just to snug it up, I've never, never had a problem. Never had a leak, unless it was a faulty gasket. And uh, it's always served me well. Okay. Now for the next, I'm going to tilt this back up. Now oh, the trim's working like new. Okay. There's no simple way to do this. All right, I've got it unscrewed. I'm just holding it there. And you just want to try to be as quick as you can. There you go. Okay, the lower unit gear oil has been changed. Next, we'll move on to uh, preparing the engine for starting and winterizing. Okay, here's my antifreeze pump bucket rig. I've got my muffs on, I got my hose hooked up. Uh, there is no rinse hose connection, which I'll show in another video with a different engine that has one. Uh, connected to a 12 volt pump. I have my 12 volt connected to the 12 volts going to the engine and I have a few valves coming out of the bucket and then I have another valve here which controls my flow. So if I open that valve, it will start to automatically pump antifreeze into the engine cooling system. And uh, this is the bucket rig that I made. I just put a, a, a valve, a spigot in the bottom of an ice bucket 
and this is what I use to winterize all my engines, inboards, outboards, works for everything. And I always use a pink antifreeze, which is a minus 50 degree antifreeze. Uh, this is purchased at West Marine, but you can get the same minus 50 degree antifreeze just about anywhere. Make sure it is for engines and uh, water systems are handy too. So what we are gonna try to do is start the engine, start the flow of antifreeze, circulate antifreeze through the engine cooling system. Hopefully we get some pink antifreeze that comes out the telltale, knowing that we've pumped it all the way through. And then at the same time, we're gonna try to uh, remove all of the gasoline from the engine. So my plan is, I've already taken the screws off the air intake here, and there's a drain for the upper carburetor, a drain for the middle carburetor, and way down there is a drain for the third lowest carburetor. So while the engine is running, I am going to loosen those. That'll drain all of the gasoline out of the carburetors. At the same time, here's the engine fuel filter, and I've already loosened this. I'm gonna take this off. I'll find that later. And then I'm going to prepare to disconnect these hoses. Okay. Now the fuel is coming in here with this quick connect. I'm going to disconnect that. And then the fuel is coming into the fuel pump. This is the fuel pump here. And then coming out of the fuel pump, going through this fuel strainer and then going out of the fuel strainer to the carburetors. So once we get the engine started, I'm gonna turn on the antifreeze, I'm gonna disconnect the gasoline, I'm gonna drain the gasoline, and we should be done uh, winterizing the cooling system and fuel system at the same time. All right, here we go. Seem to work pretty well. I'll give it a couple more cranks. I'll activate the choke at the same time, try to get a little more fuel out of there. All right, next. All right, here's our fuel strainer. I am going to blow this backwards. So now it is empty, no more fuel, and clean. I'm going to change out this fuel filter.
hopefully that doesn't fall over, but it probably will. I'm going to try to evacuate all the fuel out of the engine side. Okay, that gets all the fuel out of this line, the engine side. little compressed air through the fuel tank side empties all the fuel from the fuel tank to the fuel filter now we'll thread on a new fuel filter this is only a 70 horsepower engine so I don't need to use the bigger filter I'm fine using the smaller filter I could use either one they both fit okay now I'm going to put the fuel system back together on the boat and we're going to fog the engine cylinders on a side note here I like to use the gas from the fuel filters to help clean the uh, used lower unit gear oil out of my drain pan I like to keep things clean less messy also a good time to see what kind of debris or water comes out of the fuel filter. Uh, just another, another good inspection. Before I put the fuel system back together on the outboard, I'm going to remove the spark plugs, clean them, I'm going to reset the gap. A lot of times there will be a sticker um, or another sticker or another sticker somewhere that tells you what the spark plug gap should be. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, 0 0.04 inches. So I am going to set the gap on these spark plugs before we fog the cylinders and put them back in. My opinion on spark plugs is that if you have good, clean, sharp edges and no obvious wear, and you still have a nice deep anode and cathode, I simply clean them with a wire brush and regap them and send them back in. If you want to replace the spark plugs, you are certainly welcome to. I personally don't replace spark plugs until they look like they need to be replaced. All right, next I am going to, here's a fogging oil that I use. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and four seconds on the top cylinder as well. Uh, larger engines like a, a V8 inboard, you're probably going to want to put in more fogging oil than that. And not necessarily going to tighten them. I just want them hand tight before the engine uh, oil rather has a chance to drain out of the cylinders. I'm gonna leave it just like that. That's good. I'm finished with the key. And now I'm just going to tighten up the spark plugs here. You don't have to kill it, but you do want to semi crush the crush washer. That's that. Boots are back on. Drains on the carburetors being closed up. Closing up the fuel system, putting it back together, is typically one of the very last things I do. Okay, uh, GoPro battery. I didn't charge it fully, uh, battery died, so I have to finish up using my camera phone. Uh, so I did 
tighten up the screws, the screws, the drain screws. I put the air intake back on. The spark plugs are finished. I uh, put the uh, fuel strainer back on. And now, lastly, I'm gonna put the hood on and I'm gonna tilt the engine up. I usually leave it tilted down, but uh, I'm gonna shrink wrap this boat and I know that the owner is planning to bring it down the road and I don't want him to uh, bottom out the outboard skeg on the road while he travels. And then lastly, I am going to disconnect and uh, remove the battery for him. And that'll be that, the boat will be winterized. Next we'll move on to uh, preparing to shrink wrap, but uh, this battery is coming out and will be put on the ground by the owner to pick up. And uh, that's a wrap on uh, the service and the winterizing of the two stroke outboard. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll shrink wrap next, here we go.